Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and today we're here in Kansas City, Missouri for 10 things that shock tourists when they come here to Kansas City. And my first shock for you is you're not in Kansas anymore. Well first off, Kansas City is actually in Missouri. There is a Kansas City, Kansas, but what you want to do as a tourist, it's all pretty much here. The Nelson Atkins Museum of Art, which is amazing, that's here in Missouri. The Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, that's here in Missouri. Oh, well, the barbecue play, well, Arthur Bryant, that's in Missouri. Gates, that's in Missouri. Okay, well, what about the plaza? The plaza behind me that looks like Spain? Yep, yeah, that's in Missouri too. So like, wait, what would I do in Kansas? Well, in Kansas, what you're gonna have, you've got a couple of good places to eat, but Joe's Barbecue, that's the one that's got the gas station and the barbecue place together. That, that's in Kansas. And another thing that you might not like is when you come here, if you're gonna be airbnb in it, look, you need to know, in Kansas, the gas is more expensive and the alcohol, the beer you buy at the, the grocery store, it's only like 3% alcohol. So if you want real alcohol and cheaper beer, come over to Missouri and buy your stuff there. So just have a heads up for that one, all right? Now, the second thing that might shock when you come here is how friendly the people are. I mean, people say hi to you on the streets all the time. I was walking around town. I mean, it's a really spread out city. And I was walking around, going to different sites, and do this on the street. Hi, hi, hi. I'm like, hey, what's up? I mean, I'm a friendly person. I love saying hi. But here, I mean, they're like, the friendliness is like over the top. So people are telling me, hey, which barbecue joints I should go see? Because everyone has their favorite one. I'm like, oh yeah, Arthur Bryant's is nice, but no, you got to go to Gates. Oh, Gates is nice, but Q39 is the really one, you know? And it's kind of funny because everybody is kind of like their own, it's kind of like they're all like little tour guides of the city because they love it so much. But I'll, I'll talk about the love they have in the city later, but just how friendly the people are here. And you see that friendliness all over the city, okay? So the third thing I'm gonna say that's gonna shock when you come here is the architecture style and layout of the plaza. The plaza behind me, you notice how that tower looks like, hey, it looks like the Geralda at the cathedral in Sevilla. Yes, this whole part of town is built to have the same architectural style as Sevilla, Spain. It is really cool. And when they light it up on the holidays, oh my God, it is just gorgeous. I mean, they light it up anyway, but when they really do it for the holidays, it is fantastic. And it really shocked like how beautiful it is. And the thing is, the fourth thing that shocks when you go there, you see that amazing tower? Yeah, they have the coolest Cheesecake Factory and P.F. Chang's anywhere in the world, okay? The thing is though, those fancy buildings, they're retail shops or restaurants. So that nice one right there, it's Cheesecake Factory. It's a restaurant. Across the way, you see the other tower there? Yeah, that, that's a PF chain. It's kind of a fast, casual Chinese restaurant. Yep, it's kind of shocking. Like, wait, that's not like a museum or something? Oh no, that's all shopping. Behind that, it's a Forever 21. Yep, kind of shocking that way, I know. Now the fifth thing that's gonna shock you to come here, and this is the thing that's really blown me away, is how many great museums they have here in Kansas City. I mean, I was just at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. You'll see, the, they have it on all the postcards. It's got the shuttlecocks in the front, okay? That museum is spectacular. Probably one of the top five art museums in the US. You go in there, yeah, they have Van Gogh's, Monet's, Manet's. Uh, you wanna see some sarcophagi? Yeah, they got those from Egypt. You wanna see some Native American art? They have that. Wanna see some stuff from Southeast Asia? They have that. I mean, it's just amazing the amount of art and culture they have in, in that one museum. And there's a lot of museums around the, the city. It's great. Another museum that really impressed me when I was here is how well it was put together, the amount of stories and history it has, was actually the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. I mean, it, it's also tied in with the Jazz Museum and in the same building. But you go in there and the stories they have, the memorabilia they have, how well it's put together. I mean, that's exactly what a new museum should be because it's interactive, but it's also, you get to read and you get to see the stuff, the people and their stories. And it's really, really a great museum to go see. But also there's the Jazz Museum, like I said, or you can go to the National Toy and Miniature Museum. Yes, you like toys and miniatures. The thing is, it's not just like little dollhouse. I mean, yes, it's dollhouses, but it's all the artwork that went into the history of all these little pieces. It is really cool. And anytime you can see He-Man and Star Wars in a museum, hey, who isn't happy about those things? But probably the, the most important museum to see, aside from the, the Nelson Atkins, is actually the World War I, the National World War I Museum, the only World War I Museum really in the US. It's here. You see the monument that's there. You can take the you can take an elevator up the monument and have a nice view of the city. But the actual insides, you don't see and you don't hear a lot about World War One. It doesn't show up in the Hollywood films or in a, in a Netflix series or stuff like that too often. And so when you come here, you hear the stories about the trench warfares and they have a built out trench. You can see how people actually fought in those. And it's really 
really a powerful thing to check out. But honestly, the museums that are here, this is a world-class city for museums. So definitely spend your time going around and visiting those museums here. Now, the sixth thing that's gonna shock you to come here to Kansas City is the civic pride that the people have. Now, the people are really nice. I talked about that, but it's more than being nice. Like I've been to a lot of places in the world where the people are really nice, but didn't have that civic pride. Here in Kansas City, the streets are clean, the cities are clean. You can't keep up a place like the Plaza without the people getting behind it. And you go throughout the city and everyone, like they have their pride in their barbecue place. They have their pride in their suburb. They have their pride in their bar where they like to go out. And you have all this great stuff. So you have great, like I said, the museums, the quality of the museums that the people put into it here really shows up. And, and I know if you're here during one of the, like a football season or baseball season, the Chiefs are playing this weekend, okay? I've been seeing Chief logos all over town. It's Friday, everyone's got their Chief shirts on. Like, I got my Walters World, they've got their Chief shirt on, getting ready for the game. Like, yeah, ready for this weekend. I mean, it's crazy how much they love their Chiefs, but also the Royals. You can go to a baseball game when you're here and go tailgating at the baseball game. I mean, it's just a really great thing of how much these people just love their city. And the thing is, that's one thing is, I've made this mistake myself. I was thinking Kansas City, why would I go to Kansas City? And now that I'm here, I see all this stuff, I'm, I, I'm starting to understand, I get why they have that pride, because they have so much to offer, okay? Now, the seventh thing that's gonna shock you is when you go out to those barbecue places, the lines for the barbecue. Look, if you're gonna be going for lunch or dinner at a Joe's or at Arthur Bryant's or a Q39's, you are going to wait a while, okay? Like hour, maybe? you know, an hour and a half, sometimes only half an hour. I was at Joe's Kansas City over in Kansas yesterday and I waited, I got there at 1.30, okay? I waited in line till 2.05 to get my food, okay? And it was worth every single bite of it. So don't worry about that, but just be shy, like, my God, look at all these lines. Why do people wait? Because it's that good, all right? So if you're gonna go, what I might say is maybe have a big barbecue intermezzo between lunch and dinner, a dinner and I go about three o'clock to the barbecue places, not on the weekends, they're busy all the time, but like on Monday through Friday, then you can go there and you don't have as much of the line. When I went to Arthur Bryant's, I went at three o'clock, walked right in, out of wait for like five people, it was great. But dude, you'll be shocked how the lines are, okay? It just, it just, it's the same, but it's worth it, because oh my God, the beef brisket you can have, you go to Joe's, you go have their Z-Man sandwich, I mean, it's just so good. The burnt ends, oh dude. Yeah, pulled pork's great too. And the, 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 the barbecue sauce, I mean, uh, I, I have a whole video on the food here, so just watch that video, because I'll just start reciting all the great food they have here, all right? Now my eighth shock for you is, remember I talked about those lines, the barbecue, and how well they're worth it? The eighth shock you'll have is when you have barbecue burnout. Look, I've had Gates, I've had Arthur Bryant's, I've had Joe's, that's three days in a row, barbecue, barbecue, barbecue. You're starting to get a little like barbecued out sometimes. I know it sounds crazy, but it can happen. But what's crazy about that barbecue burnout, you can actually have a lot of really good other food when you are not here. Tons of Italian immigrants came through Kansas City and a lot stayed. You get a great Italian. You wanna get some pan fried chicken? Oh heck yeah. And Strouds, oh they're pan fried chicken with their huge sides, oh my God. It is so good. We've had a lot of Asian cuisine when we've been here. I mean, there's a lot of other things out here, but you will be shocked you eventually get that barbecue burnout, all right? Just, just FYI for that one. It's real, it's real. Now the eighth thing that's gonna shock when you come here is how spread out this city is and the transportation issues that go along with that. Look, Kansas City's got a bunch of different sections. You've got downtown, Crosstown, Westport, uh, the plaza, you got Kansas over there. I mean, you've got the suburbs, you got Independence City, Truman's house. It's all spread out all over the place. And so you're gonna have to drive all over, okay? But what will be shocking is with that distance, you're probably not gonna wanna drive. You're gonna be taking Ubers all the time, going back and forth and back and forth. And it can be a bit annoying. They do have public transport here. There's buses that go all over, you can use those. But you might be shocked is actually they have one tram line and it's free to use, but it just goes between like City Market and Union Station. Like they're still, they're talking about expanding it, but I'm gonna guess by the time I publish this, it'll still be talking about that extension. So, so there is that, but probably the, the, the shockingest thing in transportation when you fly in to MCI, the airport here, it should be shocked that you can't find any taxi lines. Like, hey, where's the taxi lines? You come out, where are the taxi lines? I don't know where they are. Look, when you get when you fly in, there's like a courtesy phone. You use the courtesy phone to call a taxi, then the taxi comes up to get you. It's not just sitting there, so just have a heads up for that one, okay? So the transportation thing might shock you a little bit. Oh, and I will say, the locals will say the traffic is horrible, no, the traffic is totally fine. Even rush hour isn't that bad here. It's actually planned out pretty well. And speaking of transportation in that Union Station, 
The 10th thing I have that's gonna shock you come here is the mammoth size and scale of Union Station. Look, when you go to the World War I Museum, you'll see this building down the hill, this big mammoth, old fashioned looking building. Like, wow, that looks really cool. Well, that's Union Station. And you go in there, they have all kinds of, there's a science thing there. That When I was here, there's a dinosaur thing you could go see. But the thing is, this Union Station was built to house like a million people, two million people to go through this thing. It's enormous. And when you walk through, you're like, wow, I am but a small fly in the world. And that massive scale is just incredible. So I do recommend going there. And if you want to grab a drink when you're there or get your you know, your coffee or whatever, or there's a candy shop there, there's a post office there, there's all kinds of things to do when you're there, but go in and go see that scale. And you're just like, wow. And if you go around the back side, like inside, there's a back where the actual Amtrak thing is. Yes, there's trains that go there. And yes, I mean, it's a couple day long train ride wherever you're going, seems like. It's a long train ride, okay? If you're going to Kansas City, New York, or LA, it's gonna be a while, but you can do that. But I will say is if you go there, they have pictures from when it used to be super busy. And you're like, wow, you could see how full it was when you walk around now, that cavernous space, you understand why they stopped using it for a long time. It just got dilapidated. And the whole city really, again, that civic pride, the city came back, rebuilt it. And now it's just this gorgeous place, but you gotta check it out. I'll be shocked, like how, like, wow it is. And I guess my last shock I'll have for you is this is from me as a traveler, I was shocked how much I fell in love with this town. Like all these years when I talked to people about Kansas City, they said, oh, Kansas City's great. Oh, they got all these great museums. Oh, there's great food there. There's great shopping there. I mean, there is great food and there is great shopping and there's great all culture here. And I'm like, but it never really occurs to you when you think, oh, Kansas City, oh, it's the middle of nowhere. It's a flyover state. Nobody cares about that. No, this city has got so much. So don't be shocked if you fall in love with it too, because I can see why the people have their civic pride. Because you know what? I'm looking at this place going, Man, this is a wonderful place to live. This is a wonderful place to, to work, to be, because you got culture, you got food, you got shopping. Yes, it's in the middle of the U.S. It's kind of the middle of, not nowhere, but it's the middle of the U.S. And it can be kind of an interesting way to get here. But man, I've really enjoyed this. I've shot how much I've really enjoyed my time here. Can say what I was expecting versus what I saw when I was here. So if you get a chance, you're going for a long weekend somewhere, you can fly into Kansas City, spend a week in here, check out the plaza and all these things. Go drink some Boulevard beer when you're here because that's the, the local beer. You gotta have that. You know, head to the museums around town. It is just a really great time. Of course, get some barbecue. My favorite is uh, Arthur Bryant's Burnt Ends, just FYI. So just know that. But I wish you all the best when you come here. And I'm not gonna be shocked if you fall in love with this city too because it is it is a really nice place. So I'll say from Kansas, I'll say bye from Kansas City, Missouri. If you wanna learn more, maybe the five things to eat when you come to Kansas City, maybe you wanna learn more about traveling the US or the Midwest or Europe or Japan or China or wherever, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions. And if you like travel videos like this, you know, fun, honest travel videos, click that subscribe button. We put a new video out every Wednesday and Saturday. I wanna say thank you to everybody here in Kansas City. They've been wonderful to us. And so I wanna say bye and enjoy. And to all our patrons on Patreon, we wanna say a big double thumbs up. You really make these kind of trips possible and so we can help other travelers. And we just wanna say thank you so much. So I'll say bye from Kansas City and this time I mean it, okay? Bye.